This video is an Inkscape tutorial on how to create a seamless pattern like the one you see. In order to follow along, the first thing you need to do is open Inkscape and make sure that the setting for scaling objects, the scale and stroke width stays proportional is set to unselected. So the proportional scale and stroke button should be unselected. The next Let's go to File and set our document properties. I'm going to set a custom page size and set the display units to pixels. Come over to the page size units, set them to pixels, and set the page size to 100 by 100 pixels. Next, I'm going to remove the shadow under the page border and close the document properties. I'm going to press the number five to center the page and zoom in, then control and scroll down to zoom out slightly. And so I'm going to add timestamps to the video so you can jump to any section of the video. But the steps I'm going to follow are the following. First, I'm going to set, create a set of circles. Then I'm going to create a set of squares. And then I'm going to scale and align them so that the top corner of the squares and the bottom corner of the circles will create our tile, basic tile for the seamless pattern. So let's get started now. First, let's create a circle. So I'm going to select the Create Circles and Ellipses tool, then Control, click and drag to create a circle, then come over and switch to the Select and Transform tool. Make sure the Proportional Scaling padlock is locked, then change the width to 20 pixels and the height to 20 pixels. I'm also going to make sure that the circle doesn't have a stroke. So let's come to path, sorry, to let's come to object and fill and stroke. And under stroke paint, make sure there's an X. Under fill, let's set it to flat color. And come down to the palette at the bottom and set it to black like that. Then I'm going to duplicate the circle, control D to duplicate and control D one more time to duplicate again. So we're going to use all three of these circles, but one of them we're going to use much later. So on the current circle now I'm going to change the fill to none, so no paint, and then the stroke paint to flat color and the stroke style. I want to make sure the units are in pixels and it's set to 10 pixels. So make sure the units are in pixels and set to 10 pixels. Then come over to the object width and height and set that to 60 pixels. And then I'm going to shift and click on one of the other two smaller circles and then go to object, align and distribute and set that relative to the smallest object and center vertically and center on the horizontal axis. And then let's move these two away from the other circle so that it's not in the way and then click on the side to deselect them and then select the larger circle control D to duplicate it and then on the new 60 pixel circle let's change the width and height to 180 pixels and press enter then shift and select the old 60 pixel circle and align center horizontally and vertically, and then 
let's come over to path and change that stroke to a path and then come over to extensions generate from path interpolate and the settings we want on the interpolate menu should be exponent 0 interpolation steps 2 interpolation method 1 these three checkboxes should be unchecked and let's check the live preview and we should get an, a set of circles that are equally spaced between each other and the spaces should be the same size as the strokes of the circles and then apply click apply and once it's applied live preview will become unchecked so you can click close once it's applied click on the smaller set of circles which will be a group so we want to ungroup that group so Control shift g to ungroup them and then click outside the circles drag and select all of the circles then go to path union to join all of the circles into one object so that's the first step we've created a set of circles now let's create a set of squares let's come scroll over here and let's go to the squares and rectangles tool and then click and control drag to create a square and then switch to the select and transform tool set the width and height to 60 pixels and then control d to duplicate and set the width and height to 180 pixels and then shift click on the 60 pixel square to select both squares and then align and align them next we want to set the stroke to path again like we did with the circle and then go to extensions generate from path interpolate like we did with the circles let's get a preview make sure they're equally spaced click apply and then close and then ungroup the smaller set of the new circles so control shift g to ungroup or you can go to the object menu and ungroup there and then let's click and drag okay one more step the last step is to bring this small circle the one we created much earlier in the tutorial to the center of the squares then click and drag to select everything there and then go to path union and we've created a set of squares uh, that's 180 by 180 and a set of circles that's 180 by 180 but i'm going to scale these up to 200 pixels so let's do the circles first set the width and height to 200 and then come to the squares and set the height to 200 width and height to 200 once that's done in the align tool let's set the alignment relative to the page and then the squares i'm going to align to the right of the page and the top of the page so the top of the page will be aligned with the top of the squares and the right of the page will be aligned with the right of the page then click align right sides and then click align top edges and then with the circles i'm going to align the bottom of the circles to the bottom of the page and the left of the circles to the left of the page something like that click on align bottom edges click on align left edges like that now i'm going to click five to zoom into the page and that's our page and then control scroll down to zoom out slightly 
and I want to remove the parts of the square, the corner of the square that's overlapping. So let's use the bezier curve and I'm going to draw a shape in the overlapping region inside the outermost circle like that and then come over here outside the square and circle and then make sure when you close the bezier that the last node has a red fill like that and then come to fill and stroke and remove the stroke from that selection and we might as well give it a fill so that we can see what we're doing and change that fill to something like 50% gray so we want to remove this area so switch to the select and transform tool shift and click the set of squares and come over to path and difference so we've removed the overlapping part of the squares next let's join the circles and the squares into one object so shift and click the circles while the squares are selected and we want to union so you can either go to path and union or you can type control shift plus to combine them so they are now they're one object and the last step we're going to do is now create our tile so to do that let's create a 100 by 100 square control drag using the rectangles and square tool and then switch to the select and transform tool change the width and height to 100 by 100 and center the square to the page center it vertically and horizontally like that then while the smaller gray square is selected or whatever color it might be for you and shift select the larger object of squares and circles and then we want to go to path and take the part where they intersect so path intersection and that's our basic tile if i control d to duplicate it and now on this step you need to make sure that your object snapping toolbar is available so if you don't see these these tools on your screen either on the right or at the top of your screen here go to view show hide and make sure the snap controls bar is checked and then i'm going to make sure just make sure all of them are checked you don't need to worry about which what each of them means like that and then you can snap the objects so now i'm going to control or not control just click and drag to select both and then control d to duplicate them and then drag them up and they'll snap to each other like that and you can see the pattern taking shape let's just do two more iterations i'm zooming out here and then control d to duplicate these and snap them there and select all of these and control d to duplicate and that's your basic tile like that and that's your seamless pattern uh, so I can control Z, control Z, 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 and control Z again, control Z, and delete this one. And we're left with one shape. And that's our basic tile for a seamless or repeatable pattern. So that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, as a bonus, I'll link the file that I created this file and you can download this image as an SVG or PNG and yeah thanks for watching if you found this helpful click like uh, subscribe uh, share thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one